look into this sheet. It says, estimate instantaneous rate of change. And uh, we are given a graph here and the problem before us is, estimate the instantaneous rate of change at the point 4, 7 in the given graph. So this is a graph given to us and we need to estimate instantaneous rate of change at the point 4, 7. So where is 4, 7? So 4 and 7 is that point. So we need to what? Okay. Instantaneous rate of change is always at a point, it makes sense, and uh, how will you find from one point instantaneous rate of change? Well, you could draw a tangent here, and then the slope of the tangent will give you instantaneous rate of change. Now, the question here is how to draw the tangent here? Well, there are many ways to do it, and one of the ways is that, let's say we consider this point as P and then we find a point Q somewhere, right? This is point Q. So when we join them, we get this secant PQ. That's a secant PQ. Now what we will do is we'll bring Q closer and closer. So as we bring P, Q closer to P, we get secant, a series of secants, right? All going through P, and these are my Qs, which are like Q dash, Q double dash, and we are basically coming closer and closer to P, right? So, and try to get a tangent there. Tangent is a point where we should expect uh, the line to just touch, just touch the graph at that point, okay? So I think this seems to be a fairly good approximation of our tangent, right? Let's see. Yeah, because we went more closer to it and then we found that at this instance of time, this blue line really indicates a tangent at this point. Well, graphical methods are very approximate, right? We cannot expect very accurate results, but to fair accuracy, uh, we can get, you know, the results. The process is that take a point away from the given point and then come closer to the given point. So, you'll form so many sequences and you'll see those sequences are crossing the curve at two points. The second point coming closer and closer to the point P, right? So once it is fairly close enough so that you can say it's almost the same point, at that point the secant becomes a tangent and so you can now draw your tangent. Once you draw the tangent then you have to make a right angle triangle and then let me just make a right angle triangle here for you and then we'll measure the slope. Bigger the triangle better the result, right? So let's take some good point here it seems this is a very good point here and then on we can take point P itself you know it's perfectly on, on the dot right so we can take and we'll make a triangle here right like this so once I'm making this triangle then slope of my triangle should give me the slope of the line right you will notice that the line is going down that means you are expecting positive or negative slope. Line going down indicates a negative slope, right? Fine. So, so what is the rise and what is the run? Let's check this out from here. So, rise is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, we'll say minus 4 because you go down 4 in this direction. Do you see that? So, the rise is minus 4 and the run is this. 1, 2, 3, 4. Same. Run is 4. Correct. Now, if rise is minus 4 and run is 4, what is the slope, right? So, slope m equals to rise over run. Is that okay? Which means minus 4 over 4, which gives us minus 1. So, 
estimate the instantaneous rate of change at 0.47 so our estimate is that the rate of change at 0.47 is minus 1 okay units well units of x over units of y at times there may be some units here so maybe meters time seconds whatever right in that case you should write down the units also right here we are not given any units so that's fine so both are in the same units just a ratio minus 1 is your instantaneous rate of change at 0.47 so we have successfully done this problem but this is a graphical method can you tell me some other method to find instantaneous rate of change at 0.47 that will be a challenging question, right? Yes. Now think about it. And let me know. For you, I'll give you a hint. Me, I may, may even solve it, right? What we can do is, this curve is like a parabola, inverted, correct? With vertex at 2, correct? So we can actually find the equation of the curve. And once we find the equation of the curve, then we can find instantaneous rate of change at 0.47 or for that matter any point right so let's try to make an attempt and you also try to find the equation of this parabola it shouldn't be difficult for you at this stage now so we have a vertex at 2 so we can write f of x well let me write just y here for the time being is equals to a we don't know what a is but we definitely know what the vertex is vertex is at 2 and 8 right so we can write this as x minus 2 whole square plus 8. Is that okay? Yeah. To find the value of a, we need a good point. And the best point for us is the y-intercept cell, which is 0 and 7. Okay? Which is 0 and 7. So we'll plug in 0 for x and 7 for y and get the value of a. So we get 7 equals to a times 0 minus 2 whole square plus 8. And when we bring 8 this side, so it becomes 7 minus 8 equals to, the square is 4, 4a, right? And this is minus 1, and when divide by 4, we get a equals to minus 1 over 4. You will note that I knew that the parabola is opening downwards, but I didn't start with minus a, right? a itself gets the right value. So we don't really have to start with minus a in cases. I've seen many students... It sometimes starts with minus a and then get confused in between and land up with wrong answer or maybe they try to fit in the answer okay now with this we get our function and uh, let me write down function in the function notation when we say function notation we change y with f of x and say so f of x equals to minus 1 over 4 that's the a value right x minus 2 whole square plus 8. Now we have a function here. Now from this function we can find instantaneous rate of change at any point, correct? Even at 4, correct? Now, now there are a couple of different methods of doing it. So one is called difference quotient where you can consider a point x and another point very close to it, x, let us say delta x, and then do f of delta x minus f of x divided by f plus delta x minus delta x. You could find that. The other way could be that you can select a point depending on what accuracy you need uh, to say point zero zero one, and then you can plug in, let's say, let's try to do it here. Let's say we want slope at, let me write slope m at x equals to 4. Then what we can do is, we can find the value of function at uh, 4 point, let's say 0, 0, 001 minus at 4, right? And divided by 4.001 minus 4, right? And then f of 4.001 is you need to replace this x with this value, and then you have to calculate. You can use a calculator for this calculation and find your answer. So, this is another way of doing it, correct? Basically, I'm saying is that the point Q which you considered was just point zero zero one away from the given point 4, correct? And once you calculate this, you can do that part, right? Once you calculate this, you can check your answer whether how accurately we did graphically, right? And uh, you can conclude. 
So at times graphical solutions may not be that bad. Okay. <laughs> well, so this is another way of doing the same thing. Right? We will discuss about difference quotient and the method of doing it uh, in other videos. And so for I'm not continuing with it, but for your interest, you should and then verify what the result is. But that's a neat method of doing it. At times, this question is also asked, like do it in two different ways. So that could be an alternate way of getting instantaneous rate of change from a given graph. So what we did here was first find the equation of the graph, right? And then find the instantaneous rate of change using uh, preceding or following or centered or difference quotient method as you wish. Okay. Thank you.